还要首先要来欢迎我们的主持人吴麦斯校长来替我们主持，掌声欢迎。Thank you for your great talk. Now we open for this topic. We open for the discussion and comment. Is there any question? So, when it comes to the hospital at home and how we differentiate it from all of the rest of the modalities and in the community medicine facilities, it, it has to do with number one, uh, utilization review criteria for inpatient. Hospital at home patients have to meet all our inpatient criteria as put out by the government of the United States and the Center uh, for Medicare Services. So there's certain criteria that get you into our physical hospital, which is the same as hospital at home. Uh, when it comes to other facilities, community medicine facilities, other virtual programs, they don't have that criteria um, and then they don't get the payment model behind it. That's an outpatient model for care hotel, for virtual physical uh, PCP visits or virtual consultations, and then any other virtual community uh, medicine centers and their visits. So we have strict criteria set by the government on what goes to hospital at home. Uh, there's a lot of gray zone though, because there's people looking at programs that treat you know, hospital-like hospital conditions, but it kind of grays into post-acute care. If hospital at home is IV antibiotics and labs, does that have to be hospital level or can that be an early discharge with hospital, you know, with post-acute care at a high acuity? That's where we have to start making some decisions on the national level of what is true hospital at home and what is po high acuity post-acute care and then what is low acuity post-acute care in the home setting. So it's, 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 a, it's a moving environment. I was just in Washington, D.C. yesterday talking about this to a group of people, trying to decide how do we make the rules because there are, there's no strict rules. We're using rules from buildings and trying to define what happens now at the home or other environments, and that doesn't always work out well. So we, have to, we start with the basics, what we have, but we have to together build the new world in the future. Thank you. Is there any question from the audience? Well, I, I, I have a, uh, I think I have a one question about this. Uh, in fact, it's two questions. Uh, for each different, for different city or different states in the United States, do they use, the, do you use the same platform for that? And the, the follow-up question is that, uh, how this uh, service was reimbursed? Or maybe paid sure. by the, the insurance company. Sure. So when it comes to different cities, the, it's different resources in each city and different, if you, there's 300 hospitals in the United States using hospital at home right now. And I'd say there's about 300 different systems. Uh, each of them use different vendors. There's about five technology companies in the United States doing this. Medically Home, Contessa, Dispatch Health, Current Health, and a couple others. Uh, they kind of drive some of the tech. And then we use multiple home health uh, community systems, multiple labs. So everybody's doing something a little bit different. And that's the problem, is there's an ecosystem, but everybody's building it for themselves, not sharing resources. So that's what I mentioned at the end. We have to build the same platform 
for ambulance, for medication delivery, for lab delivery, uh, so that we have the same thing being used throughout our country, and then we can spread that. When it comes to reimbursement, there's, there's two systems. There's the government system, so if you have a Medicare patient or a Medicaid patient, somebody over the age of 65 or somebody without insurance, that is covered by the government as long as we meet the government criteria for uh, hospital inpatient care. So that is for that. Then commercial insurance, it, it varies. Some pay for it, some do not. Individual institutions negotiate contracts to have hospital home in there. Others, like Mayo Clinic, say, well, we have a contract with a certain insurance that says you're going to pay for inpatient care. It doesn't say where, so you're going to pay me, whether they're at home or whether they're in the physical hospital. You should pay me because I'm delivering what the care that says that our contract says. So I try to force their hands. Now I have the name of Mayo behind me to help it, but I say the, the logic of it makes sense. You pay for care, let me determine location, and that's how we're trying to push the reimbursement model. There's a waiver that covers in the United States through the end of the year, but we do believe that will be extended for at least another five years and move towards a permanent payment model over that time frame. Thank you. Thank you so much for the, for the thank you. Yeah, yeah, for the comments. And I think that will be a great experience so we can share. There any question of if no I, I okay, thanks. Because one, that's a lot of data to do continuous monitoring, and two, if somebody's that sick that they need continuous monitoring, I don't know if hospital home is the right place at this time for them. And then we have to see, how do we filter through all this data? If you're gonna watch a thousand patients at different locations throughout the country, you're gonna need a very intelligent triage system run by AI to move to the top of the list, the people that are the sickest, and that's multiple modalities, not just vital signs. As I mentioned, vital signs are helpful, but usually when your heart rate goes up, your blood pressure drops, it's too late. You've got to probably come back to the physical hospital. So we have to monitor people in different modalities in different ways, catch them early with AI, and then move that to the top of the list. So if there's a list of 1,000 patients, the 10 sickest go to the top so that a human can respond very quickly to the people that get sick. And that's very difficult, and the system exists today because we don't have technology that does that yet. We're, we're just on the cusp of that, but we're not there yet. So we're going to work with others to develop that AI monitoring system to deliver streaming data in accurate pieces, and then how to filter this data properly uh, throughout the system and let the system learn from it and get smarter as it goes. All these things are important to drive better care in the home. Thank you so much. Maybe we have uh, sure. one question that is there anyone who will ask our Pang Fu Su that? Can you learn your Chita Wendy? Yung Zong Wu Wendo Ke Yi, no problem. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank for the time of interesting, and we thank you again. Thank you so much again for the Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. And I 
I will put it at the end for this section. And then we will have a small break. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor. And thank you, our moderator, Principal Wu, once again.